right, thank you to everyone and good afternoon. My name is Marco Vitali and I'm Director of System Engineering of Sequoia. Uh, I'm giving the presentation in place of Sven Otte, who will not join, unfortunately. And uh, uh, the title of the presentation is Optic in Cloud Computing, 100G, 400G, 800G. And I will also talk about something coming beyond that. First of all, a very fast introduction about Sequoia. Sequoia, it's a silicon photonics company founded in 2015 in Berlin. So our um, specific approach to silicon photonics is monolithic integration. And uh, uh, we consider ourselves a vertically integrated silicon photonics company. So that means uh, we, we sell our own transceiver and uh, uh, those are based on our silicon photonics ICs. Oh, uh, maybe just a few words. So our reference market is Datacom, so where we uh, provide transceiver for the hyperscale data centers. And uh, we are also active in 5G and, uh, and uh, uh, automotive currently, so automotive non-LIDAR applications. Um, what is specific of Sequoia technology? So we have a, a monolithic co-integration, so it means we can bring on the same chip electronics and photonics. So we can see here a cross-section of our chip. So we have a uh, SOI region where we can, uh, we can produce, process, uh, waveguide, couplers, modulators, phase shifter, any, any kind of optical components. And uh, in the bulk part, we, we can integrate electronics. So this is practically a, a, a high-end, high high-speed, high speed by CMOS process. And our foundry of reference is IHP, uh, a German foundry. Just to give you a practical example of this type of technology. So this is our qualified uh, product, which is, let's say, uh, now in volume in the market. It's a QSFP28 transceiver based on our uh, silicon photonic die. So this chip uh, is featuring 100 gigabit uh, data transmission for parallel optics. And uh, it contains all main building blocks required for a transceiver. So if we start from the right, uh, we have CDRs, then we have modulators and drivers all integrated. Then the light uh, comes out of the chip uh, through grating couplers. And, uh, and on the left, we have a receiver. So we have polarization independent gratings. We have a photo detector, TIA, and then again, CDRs and, uh, and PCB drivers. Um, the laser is mounted on top of the chip. It's a, uh, it's a MEMS packaging. So we use a standard DFB laser which is then integrated in this narrow package shown in the bottom left of the picture. All right, so the market that Sequoia is addressing is, is, is Datacom. So as we know, uh, as many hyperscaler uh, define the problem, so that the traffic in the data center is enormously growing. So we have an increased machine-to-machine -machine interconnection, uh, and, and this is boosting the requirement for optics inside, inside the data center. So um, what Sequoia is providing then is, uh, let's say, this single mode uh, parallel optics link, link which are uh, deployed in the mid-tier connections that we see here between tier, leaf, and, and spine. And, and, and they provide a high serial link uh, above two kilometers inside, inside data center. Uh, just a very schematized, uh, let's say, picture of what, what is happening. So we have, uh, we have a market, so we have uh, practically all different type of optics used in a data center and, and also copper here. And, and we see that on the x-axis we have the reach and on the y the number of ports which are deployed. So, uh, of course, copper is the most deployed, then uh, following by multi-mode optics, single mode and, and, and coherent. So what's happening in the market, we have three forces acting in parallel. So we have uh, a, a general growth, bringing this curve to the top. So then we have, let's say, increased data rate, which shift everything to the left. So it means multi-mode optics takes uh, some link from uh, copper, uh, single mode takes from multi-mode, and maybe uh, we will see other speakers later talking about coherent entering uh, into the data center as a, as a, as a possibility. And uh, what this results in a, in a, in a very uh, increased growth and, and demand for single mode optics into the data center. So if we look uh, like counting data, so we, we see the total revenue for single mode optics and multi-mode optics, and we see a steady growth since uh, 2016. And, and this will continue beyond, beyond that. Uh, and, and data is, is, is up to 2026 right now. Uh, and, how, how to make this sustainable? So the only, only way to make this sustainable is that the optics get more value. So we, we uh, create, as transceiver vendor, more value 
for, uh, for our transceiver. And, and we see that as a parameter in the dollar per gigabit uh, as, a, as a matrix for that. And, and we see the um, average um, dollar per gigabit for all single mode fiber technology, how is uh, rapidly decreased. So this means, so transceiver vendor are really ma uh, managing to, to e improve the value of the transceiver over time. And if we look a, a very specific product, which is a DR4 400G transceiver, we see that this is accomplished and almost reaching uh, dollar per gigabit, which were only known before for multi-mode optics. But uh, now, what, what comes next? Okay, so how to create even more value than this? And, uh, and we have three options to, to, uh, to work off. So first one is integration, baud rate increase, and enhanced modulator format. So this will provide, let's say, with a single transceiver, practically more traffic, and therefore drive this metric dollar per gigabit down. So what monolithic integration can do to, to achieve that? So first, first thing we can do is increase port capacity. And we have three options to do that. So we can increase bandwidth. As, as the previous presentation we have seen, so silicon photonics can bring massive parallelization of transmitter and receiver channel one next to the other in a, in a single die. So this can be done pretty easily in terms of design. Um, what we can do is to use high bandwidth component, and I will show you later uh, what the current status for Sequoia. And, and finally, we can, we can use integration. So that means remove the number, uh, possible number of component and bring them together into a single die. Energy, so this is another aspect that silicon monolithic integration can, can work out very well. So the reason is that uh, we simplify interconnects between driver and modulator, TIA photo detector, and this reduction of interconnects uh, brings advantages in terms of power. So because there are less uh, interconnects that has to be driven at such a, such a high speed. And also simplification of packaging, so which is a very important aspect. And the uh, uh, third point is cost. So a uh, very important point. So that means uh, by uh, testing our dyes on a wafer level, we can determine at a very early stage what is a good known die and, and make a transceiver out of that. So this reduces, of course, scrap and, uh, and, uh, um, and issue into production line for the, trans for the transceiver. Uh, additionally, scalability. So it's a silicon photonic process. One can produce more wafer and get, of course, um, more engines out, out of that. All right, so uh, just to make a comparison between two very good technology, one uh, is, a, is a discrete optic 400G uh, DR4 transceiver, and on the right, we have a monolithic integration. So, and we can clearly see here uh, what's the difference, okay? And especially in terms of packaging. So this is the main uh, aspect that this slide shows. So on the left, we have a, a typical EML discrete transceiver where you have multiple uh, components. You know, we have for each lane a driver, we have a photo detector, a TIA, and all these components in case of Sequoia are integrated in a, in a single die. Uh, second very big difference is the number of lasers. So for DML or EML, one needs one laser per lane. Okay, in, in the case of Sequoia, so because we have CW light, we can split the laser into multiple channels. And this reduces, of course, the cost for, uh, for the assemble in, in case, in case uh, we, we are targeting standards with much la many lanes in parallel. Okay, so this is a great advantage. And a third point, so our engine is reflow solderable. So that means this can be reflow soldered on a, on a standard PCB with a single step. So you can imagine, so like in, in a standard SMD assembly line where you place capacitors or other SMD component on the PCB, you can have our engine, you place it in position and then you reflow solder that, creating, creating a transceiver. So this um, summarizing what are practically the advantage. So we have advantage in cost because we are reducing a number of components. Uh, about size, I, I don't need to discuss. So the front end becomes much smaller which allow, of course, uh, next generation type of transceiver where density will be much higher. A third point is uncooled, uncooled operation. So our laser don't, don't require any tech cooling, so they, they can run uh, a standard uh, data center conditions. And of course, the capex for the production line is decreased because we have much less machine, accurate machine, to place this type of engine on, on the transceiver. Of course, silicon photonics has always uh, complexity in placing those type of lasers and, and the coupling because they require a one micrometer um, 
accuracy, those steps. But this is something we developed in the last 15 years and now is qualified and is, is possible to go in volume with that. A second main advantage, which I mentioned already, is the capability of making wafer level tests. So just imagine this, so we have a, 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 a wafer which contains not only drivers or TIA, we have full transmitters and receivers, and we can test of those both electrical properties, optical properties, so we can, we can check insertion loss of, of a full link, and additionally we can make also electro-optical testing. So this is a, a, a dramatic higher amount of information compared to what you can get by standard wafer level testing. So because we are not only testing the building block itself, but also they are interconnect because they are already interconnected inside, inside the chip. And uh, this type of testing has been, has been developed with Spartan by Sequoia is now qualified and, 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 and working in volume. And the typical yield you can see here on the right is very, very good and approaching typical CMOS lead a yield and, and, and in many cases is above 90 percent. All right, and another very important aspect is that we can integrate with this type of process uh, not only high speed but also control electronics and this is, has a, a, a double advantage. So first of all for wafer level testing so we can parallelize the testing which, which it's a very important aspect especially if we are considering uh, that in future uh, there will be standards like CPO that will go uh, to 16, 32 lanes in parallel. So if you want to wafer level test all these channels, it's possible, but you don't want to increase the testing time. So by placing a specific self-testing unit inside the chip, we can accomplish this, um, this, uh, this target of testing a wafer in a reasonable time without uh, increasing uh, dramatically the testing time. Uh, additionally, this type of monitoring feature can also be used during operation of the transceiver. So we can uh, monitor very well the status of the transceiver, optical power, peak detectors, uh, we have absorber, we have um, driver for laser and so on. Uh, additionally, a third point, we can decrease bomb cost for the transceiver. So the moment we can, uh, we integrate like band gap reference, we integrate a clock generator and all this type of feature, we, we need less components on, on the PCB. Um, third point that we can, uh, we can exploit of our technology is uh, available building blocks. So we, we started uh, Sequoia, uh, let's say, 2015 as a company, but before we had a lot of research uh, in silicon photonics at the Technical University of Berlin. And at that time, we developed uh, many building blocks, uh, even exotic ones. So if you look at the right, uh, we have also photonic crystal modulators, which are integrated in this platform. And, uh, and uh, therefore, we, we have a, a good uh, pool of, of building blocks that we can use for next generation transceiver. Uh, on the left, we see, on the other hand, the elect electrical building blocks, so like CDRs that are ranging from 25G NRZ to 100 gig pump 4 uh, or even higher for the next generation of uh, optical interconnects. Now, uh, just to talk about what is coming next. So, uh, one of the main questions, which will be the standard coming in future, is the bandwidth of silicon photonics can, can provide. And we can see here in this picture now some data about our transmitter. So, this is a full transmitter. And we can see here on the left uh, the uh, production building block that we are currently using and deploying in, uh, in, in the field. And we can see already that for a 100 gigabit per second link, we have already a bandwidth uh, which is around 50 gigahertz, okay? Um, and, uh, and the large signal we can see on the bottom left, so the, the I after TDQ equalizer are also very good. So that means uh, the technology is capable for, of making very high speed uh, transmitter. And, and now if we are looking to the next generation, so to 200 gigabit per second, pump four, so we are going to enhance the bandwidth additionally, so we are gonna optimize this type of transmitter in order to, to exceed the bandwidth of 60 gigahertz, and that will be necessary uh, to, to, uh, to make optical link at 100 gigabit, pump four. Uh, very similar, if we, if we look at the receiver side, so we, we can see on the left picture our uh, production receiver TIA and, and photo detector. You can see the bandwidth is about 45 gigahertz, which is 
uh, very good already for a DR4 standard. But additionally, we have integrated bandwidth control and we can boost with bandwidth. And this is what we can see in the yellow curve, already achieving a 50 gigahertz bandwidth also for our receiver. So practically combined um, and with a future development, which is targeting not really an increase of bandwidth. So we are talking about 55 gigahertz, but with a smooth roll off in order to allow uh, better equalization by DSP in order to, uh, to get uh, 106 or, or even higher baud rate uh, modulation uh, of, of optical signal. But what is the actual sweet spot for this type of monolithic integration applied to the next generation of transceivers? So as a, as a use case, so we study a, a possible, uh, let's say, future transceiver. It's a 1.60 um, optical transceiver. has uh, 16 lanes at 100 gig on the line side or 8 lanes at 200 gig uh, in the, always in the line side. And uh, when we compare these, these, two, these two options, we see that from Sequoia perspective, they are both feasible. Uh, of course, a 53 gigabaud um, solution uh, will require some efforts more for packaging because we will have to connect the DSP and, uh, and the photonics. Uh, and therefore, we need a more dense packaging uh, technology in order to double the uh, electrical interconnects. Or we can, we can think to go to uh, 200 gig, where we can reuse our actual, uh, actual uh, building blocks, uh, so, uh, sorry, the next generation building blocks, but the actual packaging technology. And in this case, of course, what will be, let's say, something to be developed is the next generation of equalizer, because the, the combined bandwidth of transmitter and receiver will be around Nyquist. So therefore, uh, a more, let's say, um, powerful equalizer compo compared to what is used right now for 100 gig will be, will be necessary. Concerning, concerning CWDM applications, so uh, these are also possible, uh, but of course, uh, we see there uh, that we are reaching the physical limit for, uh, for CWDM4. So what does it mean? So we have, uh, let's say, a chromatic dispersion, which is start limiting uh, the optical link. So it's still under debate what can be achieved. So two kilometer, 10 kilometer. So according to our simulation, uh, so two kilometers seems possible, but 10 kilometer requires uh, additional probably it's, it's very difficult and, and required. But this is not a limitation of silicon photonics of, or our technology, it's more uh, a physical limitation of the system. And, and therefore, please let me share some uh, slides which have been shown during the Beyond 400 Geek study, study group. Um, and, and we see there that this is also under debate what can be done uh, in future. And, uh, and uh, how is the limit? Uh, and also there is shown that 10 kilometer will be a very challenging standard for uh, CWDM uncooled laser operation. And as Sequoia, so we started already uh, looking into coherent for that. So what does it mean? So we started about one year ago to uh, develop building blocks. So you can see in the bottom right, so we have uh, segmented ice wing drivers, we have balanced photodetectors, TIA, IQ modulators, at the moment only as, as, as building blocks, and we are planning to, to, to bring them together in a, in a, in a full chip in, in the future uh, in order to target uh, a coherent light standard. All right? So what does it mean this coherent light is still under debate? So also we don't know, so, but we think that could be uh, a possible solution to the problem for 10 kilometers for uh, this uh, chromatic dispersion limited links. And uh, uh, another solution could be 10 kilometer unamplified point to point. That could be a very, a very good spot for this type of technology. So uh, this is the current uh, roadmap of Sequoia in terms of, uh, of chip. So we started with uh, 25G uh, optics. So we see in the bottom, bottom left that was uh, 100G and 25G for 10 kilometers, so for 5G application. Uh, then we move to 100 gig optics, and in that case, uh, we double the, the baud rate, so we moved from NRZ to PAM4, and, and then we changed the packaging concept. So the 25G was wire bonded, and then f uh, the 100G is flip chip. Uh, now what we are currently working for, for our current generation of transceiver is a, a 800 gig solution. So in that case, we are doubling the number of lanes. Uh, of course, this has to be done uh, carefully in order not to decrease the yield because uh, we are doubling, of course, the number of transmitter and receiver present in, in the chip. So that it's, uh, it's something one has to do very carefully. 
and, and finally, we see uh, a movement to 200 gig per lane. And, but here we see somehow splitting. So we see different type of uh, packaging options. So one could be CPO. So that means a very tight, uh, very dense uh, IC featuring a, a very uh, a massive parallelization of the optical signal. Or we can see remaining to eight channels and, and moving to a, a pluggable transceiver like an OSFP XD supporting 1.6D operation. And for the CWDM4, instead of CWDM4 links, uh, we, we see that uh, coherent might become reality and, and, and a possible solution for the problem. And as I said, so Sequoia is also, uh, let's say, uh, so we are selling transceiver. And this is uh, our current status. So uh, we start in 2019 with 100G Lambda transceiver. And we see here how our, our uh, DR4 transceiver up to 2 kilometer QSF PDD form factor. And then we are, uh, let's say, uh, preparing now the prototype for 800 gig based on an OSFP uh, form factor uh, with a reflow solderable engine. And on the right, uh, we see the next generation, so what we are start studying right now, uh, which is uh, CPO and, uh, and uh, uh, let's say, uh, next generation of pluggable module targeting, for example, an OSFP XD for 1.60. All right. So, Thank you very much for your attention. So uh, just a very short summary. So I think I've shown that monolithic integration has uh, a lot of opportunities for next generation interconnects in, in, in cloud computing data centers due to cost, energy, and port capacity. We think we have building blocks which can support the next generation of 200 gig optics. And, and finally, that Sequoia is entering coherent business. OK, thank you very much. If you have any question. Thank you very much. Any uh, questions? Yeah, Christoph. Hi, Mario. Question for you. So you're working with a monolithically integrated system, which is always the best for performance, but I think it's also fair to say it's, it's also hard to, to get the yield to an acceptable level for production. Can you share a bit on what you did to, to make sure the yields are, are suitable for mass production? All right, so this is a very, very good question. So it was a very uh, intense work in Sequoia. So you need to, to, to leverage, of course, wafer level testing. So uh, the first thing is collect a lot of data. And second is simplify what you don't need. So that means you, you try to refine your process and you remove then uh, what is in excess. And, uh, but the yield itself of the process for the photonics is, is very good, is excellent. So usually uh, yield uh, might be more problematic is the digital part, but again, by reducing to, to, to what is needed, uh, one can, can boost, of course, the, the overall transceiver yield. Okay, thank you. Yeah, question. Maybe I missed it just to, to confirm. When you say monolithically integrated, I still understand that the laser is external, right? The laser is external, exactly. Okay, thank you. Is there any more questions? Can you tell us something about the fit uh, rate or the MTVF or such kind of technology? Sorry, I could not understand. Fit rate or MTVF? Okay, so usually for, uh, for a complete transceiver, it's about 200, 300, yeah? And, uh, and for the optics, it's, it's better. So usually where we see, uh, where we see more prob problems are the optical, optical interconnections. So an MPO connector, they get dirty and they get particles that are a major reason of, of, of failures. Yeah? More than the silicon photonics part itself. So this, uh, the building blocks can be, have been qualified according to Telecordia and uh, and uh, let's say double three times what is required, and there is no degradation. Yeah. Do we have any more questions? Well, let's thank Marco again for thank a great talk. Much.